Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Denver Beer and Oil. This car we purchased for $200 and sold $200 worth of parts off it. So it's our free drift car and we got a free motor for it. So we're gonna put a new motor in it. But that doesn't apply to you if you're watching this video. If you're watching this video, it's for information only. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the radiator out. I'm just gonna start taking off all the ancillary stuff and then we'll get to the, the nuts and bolts of the motor. But first things first, I'm gonna show you how to remove these uh, radiator brackets right here. So this is what they look like when they're attached. So what you want to do is you want to pry your screwdriver forward while pushing down. So, right like that. Comes right off. You don't break it. You can reuse them. They don't have to, don't have to buy new ones. Next thing you're going to do, either a six millimeter or your trusty standard flathead. One, two hose clamps right there. Uh, also, there's a temperature plug right here. So this guy just plugs in right there. Pop that out, one, two, right there. Uh, matter of fact, I'm sorry, I missed a third. This one right here is your overflow reservoir. So we're gonna get that nice and loose, and then we're gonna rip the old radiator out. Next thing I'm gonna do, just to make myself some room, is I'm gonna take all the air box stuff off. This stuff is pretty easy. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter and a standard screwdriver. So, first things first, I'll loosen this guy. Then you want to turn this counterclockwise or anti-clockwise if you're in the UK. And then you want to take this guy off. This is for your crankcase ventilation, which is exclusive, I believe, to this particular car. So you may not have this if you're working on a six cylinder. However, if you're working on a six cylinder car, you will have, I believe, a hose, depending on the year, you'll have a hose that runs to the bottom of your intake boot that you'll need to take off. Okay, so got that off. And you want to take your temp sensor off right there. We're going to loosen these two. This is for the lower section of the air box. You just have to get them loose. You do not have to take the nuts off. You'll notice that the, uh, the brackets are slotted right here. So you can just slide it up and out. Then what you want to do is unclick all of these little guys. Oh, dude, you just... Okay. Well, you want to be fancy. <laughs> So I've said this a lot in my previous videos about DIY for engine removals. Uh, the way that I prefer to go about doing this every time I pull an engine is I start with one system, I make sure that system is completely disconnected from the chassis and I move on to the next. So what we're gonna do right now uh, is disconnect all of the electricals and make sure that everything is off the chassis. So basically that the engine has no connectors from it to the chassis. First thing we're gonna do, uh, I'm actually gonna pull the ignition coil with it. So we'll take this guy off right here. And then there's two eight millimeter nuts right here and right here. So we'll take those off real quick. Bit of practice is to uh, return all of your hardware from where it came so you don't lose it. We need to disconnect the diagnostic plug right here. This is for BMW techs back in the day. Uh, basically, you pry on this tab right here. So, push on it, lift up. So, next thing you want to do is pull this ground off right here. It's 10 millimeter. You're going to go over to the main power terminal right here. So, you'll see we've got a couple little rubber guys coming off. And then, basically, these wires right here go to the alternator and starter. Uh, these, wires. these big guys right here. So yeah. here and here and here. We gotta disconnect those three. And it looks like we just need a 10 and a 13. Okay, so on this one, there are two 13s. Or I'm sorry, two 10s and one 13. So the top one right here on this largest wire. You gotta point out your hands in the So wall. right here, if you follow it, sorry about the finger. Goes to this one, this one is a 13. This guy goes right here, that's a 10. This is a 10. Once you get it off, they just come off. So you wanna go ahead and do that. So there's these little brackets here. Take these off at any time. It's just two little Phillips, one on each side. I also noticed these things. So this looks very similar to an E36 uh, wiring harness. Like I think it might be pretty much the same thing. Same thing. I wonder if you can move these little brackets over to an E30 as a thing to hold it. That would actually be pretty cool. We should try that. I don't care if this car has it. I don't either. Let's try it on my M3. Let's take this guy off right here. Oh, actually, I think we might be able to put that back on. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, so you can see this, this rubber grommet comes up and out. This actually, this wiring is almost identical. 
to be honest, I think this would actually even bolt into a E36. Oh yeah, you're right, the relay is on that side. Yeah, it's all the same. So, after you uh, get those out, you wanna come over here again with your standard screwdriver. Exact same way we got that diagnostic plug out. It's hard to see, but this tab right here, you wanna pry it towards the relay and pull up on the relay. You got two of them, one, two, and then that whole plug is loose. Next thing you wanna do, is gonna be your ECU. So you got one, two, three screws on the top. And once you get these off, this is gonna give you access to the DME slash ECU compartment where we are going to disconnect the engine harness from the computer. So if it is an auto, you're gonna see another loom of wires coming out of this little penis plug right here. Coming around, going into there, and you're gonna to wanna to disconnect that one as well. But since we don't have that and ours is a manual, what we're gonna do is just disconnect this little fella. And this ground does need to be off this plug. That goes with your harness as well. This is your uh, DME ground, so you wanna make sure you get this off. So that concludes your top side, passenger side wiring. Now we're gonna move on to the driver's side. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, easiest places, right here. You've got two plugs. Some of them will have three, depending on if it's an ABS car or not. Uh, I believe that's for ABS, but anyway. So you've got one here. Again, turn it anti-clockwise, counterclockwise, depending on what part of the world you're watching this from. Right there, boom, boom. And then just like an E36, which if you haven't seen, or E36 video, watch that too. This right here is power for your fuse box. So now we got that ECU hot wire off, which is uh, what one of those wires is over there. I'm sorry, I misspoke. So you've got one for your starter and alternator, one for your ECU, and one for your fuse compartment. So again, going back to the trusty standard screwdriver. You've got another relay right here, same system, I can't even see, but same thing, just stick it in right here, pry that way. Then you can see all that is off, easy, easy. After you get that stuff off, just follow this loom forward. And you can actually undo these without breaking them, but we don't really care on this car, so. Proper way to do this, I will show you. There is a forked connector on the other side. You wanna pull backwards and up like that and this will slide off and you can actually reuse these. But again, I don't really particularly care about this car. Okay, okay, so that line forks. One of them right here is a ground for your secondary air pump. It goes through here. This is one of those connectors I was talking about. I actually disconnected one, but it's half broken. So once you get that off, you've already undone this. This is from your max airflow sensor. All right, then you wanna take this rubber grommet off of your secondary air pump because we are not going to be pulling the secondary air pump with the motor. What you're gonna to wanna to do is push inwards on this clip. So you want the clip to go in like that, if you can see that. So it starts in this position, that's locked and closed. Push it forward, it elongates the plug, and then you pull outward from the solenoid and it should come right off. And you can leave this with the motor. I'm gonna unplug it just to keep it from getting caught on stuff. But this wiring loom, again, is gonna come with the motor. So the rest of this stuff can stay connected. Uh, then from here, all we gotta do is get our secondary air pump. So I got the secondary air pump plug off right here. So you squeeze on either side, pull out from the air pump. Then what you're gonna wanna do is pull this plastic hose off and on most of these cars, because they're getting up there in age, these lines are gonna be very brittle, so be very careful when you pull these off. This one seems to be pretty new, so not too big of a deal. But squeeze here, like that, to elongate it and pull outwards. So now our secondary air, air pump is disconnected. Uh, I am actually going to remove it to buy us some room for when this engine comes out and just to make things easier to see for you guys. So I'm gonna do that right now. We're still on electronics, I guess this kind of counts. Uh, this is your traction control throttle body. So you want to, for ease of removal of the engine, I'm just gonna leave this whole throttle body in the car. So one hose clamp, one connector right there. Push this in, pull out. Then you can kind of droop this all to the side like that. Like so. And now our secondary air pump can come out. This is your secondary air pump, by the way. So I'm kind of getting a little off track here. 
by this. Uh, but the next thing we're gonna wanna do is disconnect your cruise control and regular throttle body. I don't know if you saw me do that, so I'm gonna do it again for you. But these things are very easy to do. What you wanna do is kinda pull the throttle forward a little bit, squeeze these two, push it out, and then there you have it. She's right out. Same thing applies to the cruise control. It just slips out the bottom rather than the top. So that's off. What you're gonna wanna do is spin this cable 180 degrees or the clip. So you're gonna have to get the wire through. You get it to there and then you just pull on it and the clip comes off. Save these. They break a lot, so be careful. And then what you wanna do, so on this one, because it has a metal section, you push your little retainer past the metal section and then you can kinda turn it like that and push it through the rubber grommet and get the whole thing out. So this one doesn't have that issue, so what I'm gonna do is get it right here, kinda shove it in, so you can see right there. So get it like that, and then push it through. And there you go. Okay, so this little guy here, we're gonna get rid of, is this cable right here, stays with the car. That's the first valve. This is where it's coming from. That concludes the wiring that you need to disconnect on the top side of the car. Now we're gonna move our attention to the bottom side of the car. Okay, so one thing that's really easy to forget is this little guy right here. This is your engine ground. So you'll see it runs from the engine arm over to here to this wire. That is what grounds your engine to the chassis and completes the circuit for all the electronics. So, once you get that guy off, I'm just gonna put the nut back on so I don't lose it. So that's all your engine stuff. Your engine is now pretty much completely disconnected. However, the engine harness, if it's coming with your engine, which it should, make your life easy, uh, there's a few other things you need to disconnect. Right here, we've got an O2 sensor. Just pull on it, just pull. There we go, okay. That's disconnected, and then you want to get it out of the bracket on the transmission. There's a little wire bracket that it's attached to. And then on your transmission, you are also going to have, right here, you got one plug on your transmission, same type of plug as usual, press in, pull out. And then you've got all that line all the way back, there's a bunch of little clips and junk you gotta get out. Keeps going, and then right here is your plug. Go back through and cut all these wire ties so that this can come with the engine. The engine harness contains all of these wires, so on any car, if you're leaving the transmission in the car, uh, you need to make sure that you remove these wires from their brackets and from their respective uh, places on the transmission and chassis. So, now that we have this disconnected, this officially concludes our electrical system. Every wire on the engine is now disconnected. So if you get all these, you have all of your wires disconnected from the engine. This is damn close to what the six cylinder is. So follow this process, use your head, watch where the loom goes. The loom is gonna stay with the engine, okay? You wanna make sure you have your wires off your transmission. You've got all those relays off. They're very, 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 very similar. So uh, should be pretty easy to follow. Now that we've got our electronics done, uh, we're gonna go back up top and we're gonna uh, start with the fuel system. You find your fuel hoses running up from your chassis and there's always gonna be two on BMWs as far as I'm concerned. I don't believe they have a return this system, at least not on the cars we work on. So at this point, since we have disconnected our purge valve and both fuel rail lines, which I showed you where they were, uh, the fuel system should be completely disconnected. I will verify that. But you're gonna wanna buy new hose clamps for these ones. If you look really closely here, you'll see that they're tapered, so you can only remove them, you can't tighten them, unless you have the fancy BMW tool that acts like a socket and goes on here. But there is no socket size that fits these, and you can only open them, you cannot close them. So throw these in the trash and buy new ones. Fuel system is disconnected. Uh, and again, back to my one system at a time theory. Uh, we've already done the radiator. So at this point, we're gonna concentrate on the cooling system. We do not have that completely disconnected yet. I would highly recommend you go to Harbor Freight, get one of these guys for like five bucks. Super long, standard screwdriver. Because the lines you have to get to are way down here. So this guy right here goes to your engine. And this guy right here goes to your engine. So if you can see what I'm poking on, 
follow that screwdriver. Let's try to give you some light. There you go. So you can see that. That's one. And then the other one is this guy right here. Yeah. So we're going to disconnect those. And then our cooling system will be entirely disconnected. So on this one, it looks like it's easier to get to it from here. So we're just going to disconnect it on the engine side. We're good on that one. Right here, this guy. Right on the back of this pressure relief. Anyway, uh, okay, so once you have the hose clamp you just saw me remove there, and the one down there off, and both of those hoses are removed, you need to get this hose right here out of its little brackets. Here, here, so it's free floating. And that concludes your cooling system. All right, so we've got electrical done, fuel done, cooling system done. <clears throat> one thing you are gonna need to do uh, which we have already accidentally done before this video was even thought about is there's two banjo bolts down here on your steering rack You actually only need to disconnect the top hose I believe let's see the cooler cool comes from push here yeah so I think top hose so if this is like the E30 we just did and then you disconnect either this hose clamp right here so the one on the pump right here on this elbow that you can see or you can disconnect it from this hose right here which is already off but move your handy there you go so this hose right here normally plugs in right there and there's a hose clamp but again we've already done that so you're good to go at this point we have engine mounts and transmission bolts and this sucker's ready to come out we're going to disconnect exhaust because obviously that's connected to the engine. So we've got four bolts. I believe they're 15 millimeters. I will verify that for you. And then we have all the transmission bolts. So this right here is an E10. This is an E12 right here. And these are E14s. These are external torques. Make sure you purchase these before you do this job because every BMW on the face of the planet has these for bell housing bolts. So. Uh, I'm going to start with the exhaust. I'm going to use a nice big impact and since we have another motor with unbroken exhaust studs, I frankly don't care if I break these. Probably not the case with you guys. So if you're pulling these and you do care about breaking them, soak them in penetrating oil for quite a while before you attempt to do this. If you back it off and it starts to get tight, tighten it back up, lube it up again, back it back out. Uh, typical East Coast US rusty car. Uh, techniques so okay so I'm gonna start from the top here uh, there are two bolts that you're gonna want to remove from the top uh, I did not do anything special here or crazy because of the lift that we have we did this as you can do it in your driveway so there are two Torx bolts you have a short e14 and you have a slightly longer e12 one of these is in the starter if you're looking at the bell housing it's in about the, I would say 11 o'clock position, okay? That's your E12, that's this guy. It goes through into the starter. The second one is at about the 12, 30, or one o'clock position, and it is an E14. Once you crack them loose and you get about two or three turns on them, you can just do it by hand. My big fat hands were able to get in there and turn it no problem, so if you're doing a four cylinder car, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, six cylinder cars, I'll be honest with you, you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of room to reach your hand in there. Uh, you may need to do it from the bottom with a really long extension and a friend helping you guide it in from the top. Uh, anyway, so, like I pointed out before, so here's the E14. You can reach up there and feel it. So if you can get a friend with a really long extension coming in from back here, uh, you can guide it in. Well, you may even be able to do it yourself. Like, you know, I can get my hand here, guide it in, get that sucker on. Okay, so you got one E14, two E14, three E14, four E14s, one, two, three E10s, and two E12s. And that is all of the bolts connecting this engine to this transmission. Uh, last thing on the list here is your engine mount nuts. I did it from the bottom because it was easier. You can do it from the top as well. There's a nut on both sides. Uh, this was a 16 millimeter on both sides. You can actually stick an extension right up through the control arm and zip both of those off. It took me about two seconds. Perfect. So once those guys are out, you are ready to rock, my friends. And uh, this, this engine is ready to come out. So all we got to do now is get the, uh, the hoist and yank it out, and we'll be good to go.
Okay, so uh, that concludes how to pull an engine out of the Z3. Uh, the only one thing that I forgot, well, two things actually, were this vacuum line right here goes to the fuel pressure regulator. I believe I even talked about it and forgot to pull it. But it goes right down on the driver's side frame rail. Uh, the other thing I forgot is there is a 10 millimeter that goes through this bolt hole right here. It's right above that E14. So up, but it comes in from the opposite side. So if you get your hand up here by the headers uh, and use a ratcheting wrench, you should be able to get it out. Uh, so that's the one bolt that I forgot to pull. That's the threaded side. Uh, other than that, very straightforward. We got this engine out pretty quickly. But anyway, yeah, so thank you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please throw us a like. Uh, actually, throw us a subscribe. You can like later. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, please let us know. Our description has all of our info in it. If you want to email us, uh, it's got our Instagrams, everything. If you guys want to get in touch with us, if you have any questions, you want us to do any more videos, please let us know. Uh, yeah, anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for that. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something out of this and stay tuned for more good stuff. <laughs>